You're listening to the Story Shout Podcast, hosted by Kelsey Jones. We're a weekly podcast dedicated to destigmatizing failure and laughing at our normalcy. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Story Shout. My name is Kelsey Jones, and I'm joined here today by John Henshaw. John is a friend of mine from the marketing world. Uh, I think we met speaking at State of Search in Austin, if I remember right. So That, that could be it. I don't remember. It's Everything's a blur. And then after two years of nothingness, um, I have no idea yeah, yeah. where I've been. Somewhere <laughs> in a past life mm-hmm. we met. So, John, thank you for coming on. Yeah. Happy to be here. Uh, so, John, uh, what do you suck at? Well, I, I guess I have to like pick one. Right. <laughs> so yes. That's, Just that's one. Weird. Exactly. I, <laughs> I would say that as it relates to the kind of stuff that we do, I I suck at trying to do too many things to a thing. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and, and the thing that probably comes to mind, um, although it's somewhat of a distant memory, I guess, is uh, the years at uh, Raven um, with Raven tools, we, you know, we started off simple and, and it was sort of like, we're going to uh, have a rank tracker and we're going to run some reports or whatever. And, and it's only going to be for SEO. And I think that it's really hard as an entrepreneur um, and wanting to grow a business to not want to do all the things. Um, Right. And, and, I could never overcome that. I was never able to overcome that um, uh, when I was doing that software. And, um, you know, we wanted to add social, we wanted to add paid, we wanted to, you know, we wanted to do all the things when there were already companies doing those things and it was outside of our wheelhouse, Uh, particularly mine. I mean, mine being SEO. So it was, it was along the lines of, you know what? We're going to do all things social. We're going to we're going to do all the social posting, all the stuff like that. And of course, you know, you've got Buffer and 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 right, other tools out yeah. there that have perfected this, and they're constantly improving and, and and perfecting on it. And I think the the biggest issue was with that uh, was that we we couldn't make it awesome when when you're trying to make all the things, mm-hmm. you aren't able to to ever get the focus and the attention that each one needs to Mm -hmm. make it really good, to make it like the best, to make it super competitive, especially when there are companies already out there that that is all they do and they do it really well. And that's something that I'm not sure I'm over yet. Like I've gotten over that. I I mean, and, and so I've, I've been very slowly on the side working on my version of a minimalist contact relationship manager. And Every single time I look at it, I work on it, I think about it, I talk to the developer working on it. It is an absolute complete struggle for me to not, to not be like, okay, we need to ask this, we need to add this task manager, how are we can do calendars and you know, whatever, right. whatever. And when all of my past experience says I shouldn't be doing that, that's a yeah. bad idea, John. You should perfect the core features of this thing, which is managing a contact, adding a contact, working with your contacts. Right. Um before you go down that road? I think it's hard in tech, especially, and this could probably apply to anywhere, but you see other apps or services or software like doing that well, or what you think of well, not even competitors to you, but like, so I'm building an app as a side project and I just hired the developer this week and we had to narrow down what components to start with in the app or whatever. And she wanted to add like a community feature to it. And I'm like, that's not even, we can't add that. Like that's going to be a whole other thing. Like community building, adding a community like component to an app is a whole other dimension that the app doesn't even need. And so I had to like put the brakes on it and just say, you know, we can't do that right now. Like right now we need minimum viable product or whatever, like just, build something. But it's hard when you're creative and you're an entrepreneur and you have all these ideas that could work. And so you want to see if they will work, but that doesn't mean that they should work or that you should do them. It's funny because the developer you're using, you know, it describes the blessing and curse type of thing, which is you want to work with 
a software developer. I'm assuming you can't code worth anything like I can't. Um, and so, and so you want somebody who is going to offer those suggestions, you know, be right. the, the guide for how your technology is going to work and that type of thing. You know, you're going to have an idea of uh, conceptually of what is probably going to be good and, and reasonable. But for the most part, you really need this person to make good decisions. Uh, and, and, and like I said, have those ideas. And, and so it's, that's, that's like a case of, I like the way you're thinking, you know, you know, type of thing. like, 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 thank you for wanting to make this better. And, and I think we would probably agree that a community feature is not a horrible idea. Yeah. There are plenty of reasons why I wouldn't want to do it. And I'm sure you probably would feel the same, <laughs> but, but their mind is in the right place, you know, uh, around that, like, oh, you know, this is, you know, you, you want that creativity from that person. and. And at the same time, you know, it's, 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 I think where you were just going with it, which is, but that's not what we're building right now. Right. <laughs> I mean, like exactly. we really, truly, I think you, you may have said it, uh, you know, we really, truly, truly need to have a, an MVP that just does what it's supposed to do and works really well. And, and that can be the gravy that comes later. That can be the, the thing that helps um, grow the audience for it or, you know, spread the word. Yeah, and I I think what's hard what is hard when it's not your main project or job or whatever is um I keep thinking about that quote I think Facebook used to say it like years when they started back I don't want to I don't you know I know they're controversial now but back in the day when when they were smaller they all uh, I think Mark Zuckerberg always said done is better than perfect and I try to think about that like okay, in all areas of my life, not just my side projects, but even especially my side projects, like what can I just get done where it's not bad? Like I don't want to make it crappy or like rush it and make it not work, but what makes it done and we can move on to the next step of the building process versus where's what's our version of perfect where we could add everything all at once. So this takes me back to sort of what I was talking about earlier, which is I want to offer some clarity from my perspective, like how, what I think about like done and perfect and that type of thing, which is the habitual chronic issue that I had when I was at Raven for all those years was it was done, but then left <laughs> meaning, meaning, and, and, and actually some of it is definitely my fault just because if we're talking about like our, the thing I suck at, <laughs> yeah. um, but the other thing had to do with, I have partners and I, and there's a whole company being run and we're trying to grow. And so for a lot of other people, when I finally got this thing done, you know, as in you built it, it, the first idea of it, you know, you built it and, and, and it technically works, but it's not complete and it needs a lot more to go with it. And this is not going to be good enough. And, and everybody would move on. And I, and I found that to be extremely frustrating versus the other approach of not adding on things, not moving on, which would be I, so I've been working on my thing for like three years. <laughs> I'm on like my third or fourth developer. Cause it's just everything. Like one guy had a tornado take out everything he had. And uh, that was oh the end gosh. of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like horrible stuff for some of these people and I'm, and it's, and it's awful. Um, but it has delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. And I've had to start over and that type of thing. But, but with, with this, it's done to me versus perfect has to do with labels. So so the first initial done will be what we might call an alpha, mm. you know, but it's not done, mm -hmm. but it's done enough that I'll I'll feel comfortable enough to to maybe have like private invites, have people come in and start you know yeah. playing around with this, that type of thing. And even when it's ready to take anybody, it won't be perfect and it won't be done. But it will be done, and then and I know I know this is like probably making no sense because I'm I'm thinking about my own words right now and it's not making a lot of sense. But the thing I think that I want to bring attention to in regards to like what I've sucked in the past and what I really really want to get over and change in my life when I approach this stuff is that instead of trying to add a bunch of new features after it gets like publicly released and everybody can have it, and I know it's not perfect, instead of trying to add a bunch of stuff, spend the time to continue to perfect the thing that you have released. Just, just don't add a bunch of stuff. Just perfect what you have um, for six, 12 months, whatever it might be. Just keep taking the feedback, 
you're going to have a ton of people or I'll have a ton of people or whatever, you know, that will come and be like, I wish you do this. Or can you add that? Or, you, you know, it'd be really cool if you did this thing. And I, and I, I can listen to that and I can write it down, but I, I need to stay away from it. I need to not do it. What I need to do is react to the feedback for the features that exist here and now, you know, yeah. when, when they're using it. And, and essentially, cause, cause I, in, in order for something, especially for us, for, for people who are just like individual yahoos, <laughs> or hiring some some developer the only way we're ever going to be competitive with this or or you know have the market prove it as something that's worthy of you know right. people using and it could be become something um is that attention to detail that attention hmm. to even though we'll never reach perfection we will continually be like, how can I tweak this? How can I make that better? How can I make it a little faster? How can I, how can I make it so that there's just little to zero friction to do these very common things that people do with this app without adding all the other crap? I love that. I, cause I think it's so easy to get distracted with things that you didn't do. It's, it's easy to miss the things that should be improved because you're so, I think there's in our culture, it's like, that you should always be bigger and better than what it was before, but things can be better and still be the same. If that makes any sense at all, yes, like totally like features are the same, but they can work so much better. And that's, and that's really what probably users want. Like if I, if I want an email service or something, I just want it to work. I don't want to, Oh, create a website from your emails or like, share your emails on social. Here's all these share buttons. Like I don't even want that. If I'm signing up for an email provider, I just want to send emails to my email list. And I, I think in tech, we forget about that. Um, so that's a really good point, like focusing on improving what you already have instead of chasing the next big um, like release or feature. It's it's really difficult to do it. I mean, as as you know, us being fellow creators, fellow entrepreneurs, makers, you want to make, I mean, like yeah. you want to do it. everything in me says, keep making it more awesome and add all these things. Uh, and there's a lot of pressure to do that. I mean, that you'll, you'll end up getting feedback from people who do use it where they're just like, I, it'd be perfect if I just had this one feature mm. and, mm -hmm. and it's really hard to ignore that. Uh, and so that, and I suck at ignoring that. I suck at ignoring <laughs> that. I su suck at not doing that. I suck at not <laughs> going to add all the things. And, and so that's why this time around, I'm just going to do my best to remain disciplined to see if this approach works. Yeah. And fortunately, my life doesn't depend on it. You know, it is it is a right. side project. I have a main job and I'm fine. You know what I mean? But, but, and, and so I'm a, I need to remind myself of that. Like, this doesn't have to be some giant financial success, you know? Of course, I we dream of those things. We want it to be, but but I'm building it because I want it to exist. Like the thing I'm building mm -hmm. doesn't exist. I've wanted to build it for forever, right. so I'm going to build it. It might be a giant money suck <laughs> because I end up being the only person who uses it, but at least it exists, and I'm happy, and I made something, and you know, whatever. So I don't I don't know. It's just I hope I can do it. I hope I hope that six twelve months or you know whatever down the road after things thing gets done and is out there that I'm, I'm not just, I haven't done the complete opposite of what I just talked about. <laughs> so. Yeah. And continue to suck. <laughs> right. The app I work, I'm working on, it's the same thing. It's like, I want it. So I'm, that's why I'm building it. And, yeah. but those are the best projects. Cause I think it just, it is the, the journey itself is rewarding not to be like cheesy or cliche, but like to see it get built and finished, I think will be, satisfying it is it is for us i mean i'm yeah. saying like you have to be that right. kind of person i mean it's it's extremely satisfying it feels really good and then of course it i would say at least for me it has less to do about the money and if if it ever makes any it has more to do with the excitement i get from somebody using something that I also love that's I, that I crafted yes. that I made that, that came from me. I mean, that's sort of like the maker's dream, you know? Right. Um, and, and I think it's, it's amazing if something like that could go on to be a source of 
revenue and, you know, be your business or your lifestyle business or whatever. But, um, but just knowing that you've poured yourself into something and something that you really feel strongly about and you want to exist and that gets validated by the market, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of exciting. Um, so I don't know. I mean, that's, there's a little bit of that, that, drives me. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of something I know you do. I think you do a lot, you know, which is like writing and stuff. It's the same type of oh, thing. Yeah. Like it's, there's, yeah. there's a lot of gratification, just, I don't know, emotionally, intellectually, I have no idea, you know, that where it's just like, awesome. Like that I mm-hmm. wrote something that was important to me that I thought might be important to other people and um, people, and it resonated with a lot of people and that there's a really good feeling about that. So. Yeah, I agree. And that's what I was going to ask you um, as you were talking that I thought about is I think this process and probably why it's hard to just work on what you already have is because it it feels so personal and it feels so, um, at least for me, I feel vulnerable making it because it, whether I'm writing something or, you know, building this idea for this app that I've had for years, I feel very vulnerable making that because I've had the idea and been excited about it for so long that to finally do it is like very scary for me. And so I think that like dealing with that in my brain, as well as the logistics of it has have just been a really long road because it's like you finally get to the point where you can make it. And I've had some, you know, stop and go moments where I just am like not ready because I'm just so scared that like, what if it doesn't work out? And so I've also been working through the, men, you know, the mental, I don't know, emotional side of it as well. And I think when you're super creative, you, you struggle with that too. So I have this um, life philosophy that I've adhered to for as long as I can remember. And, it, and it's called the philosophy of lowered expectations. <laughs> and so, I like so that. I, so, and, and it works for me. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think it's a depressing way to live your life. I think it's, um, it has to do with, I don't expect much from other people. I don't expect, I mean, I just don't. I mean, like, like if, I, if I'm going to the DMV, if I'm going flying, right. I, my expectations are so low (laughs) that I expect for delays. I expect for something stupid to happen. I expect for it to not go smoothly. That's my expectation. So I, so I enter it at a much lower place than everybody else. And, and when things go smoothly or holy crap, like things go really well, like above and beyond, you know, something going smoothly, uh, it, it makes life a lot more enjoyable. Like I, I have found that for me, my, my secret to unlocking more happiness in life, as opposed to depression or something is, is to lower my expectations, you know, like, and the thing is, is I think it's consistent with reality, which is it's just, we're all just people right? doing our best. We're all true. a little crazy. We're all a little crazy. Very true. <laughs> and, and, uh, and we don't know what each other's going through in life. And, and so I would say that a better way to say that philosophy of lower expectations, that it is more of a practice of empathy, meaning mm. uh, when you leave the door and you go out into the world, just immediately start pract- practicing empathy and assume that, you know, somebody is, you know, they're probably being an idiot because things are hard for them. Right. They're having a bad e- day or eventually it wears off and you get angry <laughs> and you get angry at the world. <laughs> you tweet whatever airlines and whatever. But, right. but I, I find that um, if you, you approach it that way, you, you get a little bit of a uh, cushion before you reach that place. I love that. I, so I need to have more empathy for myself and also not have as high expectation. Like not everything has to be so scary. Yeah. Well, empathy for yourself and, and everybody else. Like in other words, Try to approach it kind of, kind of like how. By the way, my background is psychology and counseling. Um, <laughs> my educational background, so that's probably where this is coming from. But, uh, but this idea around you know relationships, you generally people either think the best of the other person or they think the worst of the other person, and that will determine how they relate to each other. And so it's it's a lot more along the lines of approach the world with thinking the best before you just assume that trying to screw you over. Um, wait until there's some evidence of that <laughs> before you, yes. that's your mindset. So that's, that's sort of, what I was thinking of like, you know, it's empathy for yourself for sure, but also 
uh, practicing that empathy until you have no more, <laughs> you know, until they give you a reason to be like, screw you. <laughs> I love that. Cause I'm trying to get better at, um, assuming the best out of people instead of the worst. Cause I'm really bad at like assuming someone's doing something like out of spite or like manipulative. And most of the time people aren't. So I, I definitely feel that I need to get better at that. It's intellect over emotion. I mean, I'm saying as in like emotionally, I'm, I'm pretty much down on, on everything, <laughs> but intellectually I try to convince myself that people are doing the best they can, but as much right. as uh, I know, I just said all that stuff, but at the same time, it's like, but I'm, you know, I'm still human. I'm an emotional guy. And I, I still just, I'm sort of like, I don't know. I, I walk around with just a complete, complete disappointment in society at most times. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. Well, and that's what this podcast is all about. Like just talking about like our failures and, you know, everybody's bad at at least one thing, if not several things. So that that's kind of a good point for us to wrap up on. I know we could talk forever about this kind of stuff, but um, what's something that you want to try to work on or do you have like a mantra or like mantra is kind of cheesy, but you know what I mean? Like something like that's going to stay in your head as you're building um, and working with the developer that you want to share. I think it's just staying, staying focused and, and on point. Just each time I get new ideas, don't act on them, write them down for sure. Put them somewhere. Yeah. If you, if you got to get out of your brain, get it out of your brain and make sure you can go back and, and reference it. But Actually, as my dad always says, uh, keep the main thing the main thing, and and Ooh, so I love that. Yeah, so so keep the main thing the main thing is what I'm going to try to do, um, which I've not been good at at the past in the past. Okay, I will ask you in a few months <laughs> if your main thing still your main thing, and okay. you'll know what you're talking about. Um, John, so if anybody wants to learn more about what you do or connect with you online, where can they do that? Uh, probably the best place. Uh, is Twitter, which is um, Henshaw, the H-E-N-S-H-A-W, H, I can't even say my own name, H-E-N-S-H-A-W, so twitter.com slash Henshaw. And then um, they can just go to coywolf.com, C-O-Y-W-O-L-F.com, um, which, by the way, is not a koi wolf. It's actually a coyote wolf hybrid, and there's a whole story behind it. Oh. nothing about it being koi. <laughs> okay. Okay, good to know. I didn't know that piece of trivia. Yeah, yeah. So, so hit me up on Twitter and I'll give you more trivia. You know, so okay. there you go. <laughs> well, thank you, John, so much. And thank you to everyone else listening. And until next time. Thank you for listening to the Story Shout Podcast. Don't forget to review us on iTunes and connect with us on social media at Story Shout or online at storyshout.co. Until next time. Stay normal.